Now what I've done, I've got one of my very favorite books in the whole world with me. Hugh Nibley's The Message of the Joseph Smith Papyri, the second edition. And thanks to John Gee and the fantastic work of Farms for finally putting this back into circulation and including all of the materials that Deseret Book left out because they didn't think a big book would sell. Gee spent 17 years checking the footnotes along with a several member staff reassuring us the accuracy of this text and correcting what was incorrect. So it's a very excellent correcting text. What I've done is I've included my Greek notes in with the Book of Breathing notes, and then that way I have it all as one, and I don't have to bring in my Greek lexicons and my Greek interlinear, and, you know, I have three or four books all in one because I put my notes in one book. Kind of a hint there. That way I only have to carry two books back into my backyard with me on this 15-mile hike I've made. <laughs> Much easier to carry the luggage, you know. In 2 Corinthians 5.18, the Greek is remarkable. And, and uh, Margaret Barker didn't mention this particular verse, but here's 2 Corinthians 5.18. Tade panta ek tothio to katalazantos hemas yuto dia Christo. The entire universe. Tade panta. Panta is absolutely everything. The entire universe is atoned to God through Christ. The universe is healed, put back together to God through Christ. All things are united or, or fused, combined. And these in, are included with God now. Now, I have a note here that says, go to page 111. I've cross-referenced my text. I always cross-reference my text with, with all the cross-references I can. Oh, and, and this is good, yes. Jan Zandi, the Egyptologist, has observed, observed that it is not only in Christian dogma, but also in the Egyptian theology, that father and son are of identical nature, the Wesensgleich, so that what applies to the one applies also to the other. This is the Egyptian idea of entering the horizon. Now, the horizon... You know, the far distant line that you look at, as the sun sets, it goes down below the horizon, down into the underworld. The idea is to become divine, to become immortal, eternal, to live forever. You must join the God on the horizon. You see how this brings in the cosmological angle here? It, it, it's really beautifully expressed in the Egyptian and in the Greek in the New Testament. And, of course, John 17, 21, I have right here. Hina pantes en osin kathos so pater en moi kago en so hina kai autoi en himen osin hina o. That they all, this is Christ's great intercessory prayer. He is praying this to the Father. He is praying that they all may be one. As thou, Father, art in me, and I am in thee, that they may be one in us. Ain is one. See, this focus, this is on the quantitative aspect of the number one, uh, uniformity, quality. It's one and the same. This is the idea of the, the Greek ain. They all may be one in us. And he's praying about his disciples to the Father, that they may all be one with him and his Father. And then I have, oh, and of course, the idea of joining the disc is so that you can become identified with the God. Nibley says that on page 11. And hence the fusion of the candidate with his father Ray on the horizon. This is the Egyptian idea. It's also the Greek cosmological um, coming together. Oh, in John 17, 23, let me read this to you, too. Ace ain Hina osin tetelomenoi es hain, that they may be perfected into one. You see, this is the idea. The uh, Barker as the atonement, as a as a uh, restoration, a recreation, a a renewal, a healing. This is the idea of John seventeen twenty three. They want he wants them to be perfected into one, repairing the torn fabric. 
of the universe. This is the principle of the atonement. And Nibley notes this on page 112. Very interesting. At the beginning of the Sinuhi story, the king flew to heaven and was united with the sun's disk, who was his heavenly father. The flesh of the god was fused with him who made him. <laughs> wow. That's powerful. That's powerful. As a result of having been fused with Ray, the subject enters celestial glory as a Ba. And the Ba is the double, the divine aspect of the human personality. And then I have a note here to turn back. I've got these all over the place in, in the uh, Book of Breathings. Let me see if I can find this here. Oh, yes. Yeah, this is beautiful. This is on page 133. It is possible, Morantz concludes, that optimal proximity to the god, as illustrated in funerary drawings, might well signify becoming Osiris as a new form of existence for the deceased. You see, there is a change once one enters into eternal life. You change from being mortally human into immortally divine. Through ritual, they acquire the nature of the God, he contends. He enjoys, he enjoys complete identification with the God. The essence of the mysteries, according to Herman Keyes, was to become a follower of Osiris. And, in fact, the idea was to identify with Osiris. And see, this is one of the arguments against Joseph Smith, uh, identifying the figure in facsimile number one as Abraham, because it should be Osiris. But Abraham has acquired the properties of Osiris. This is a very good Egyptian idea. Joseph Smith is spot on on that aspect, identifying the human with the divine. And he does it again, in fact, similarly number three, with Abraham on Pharaoh's throne. You see, the throne was the female goddess Isis. <laughs> the, the humans are c connected. They become one with the gods, even in the Egyptian ideas also with the Greek, as I've read. The character of Osiris is one of the most difficult problems presented, of course, to the Egyptologists and by the ancient Egyptian religion. However conflicting the two roles of Ray and Osiris were, Ray is the sun, and Osiris is the, Osiris is the Egyptian Christ. He was killed, he was dismembered, and he was restored. He was put back together and resurrected, but he's the god of the underworld, and so he's the Egyptian Christ figure. Ray is simply the sun as he traverses the sky, but he is the eternal deity, the one who gives life. Because, quite frankly, look around you, the sun does give life. So it is an eternal god, according to the Egyptians, yes. Its power gives life. They both have in common this ability to overcome the powers of death and destruction and are thus seen fit to rule and to lead. The mystery of eternal life is identical for men and gods in every respect. That's what the text says on page 133. So this, uh, this idea, basically from the Greek, as Margaret Barker has noted, and as I've noted with, with another verse, so there are several other verses, as well as the Egyptian Book of Breathings, the whole point of the Egyptian Book of Breathings is to unify, once again, men with the gods. We are to gain our heritage through the at-one-ment. That's the power and beauty of this concept.